Hello and welcome to the final round of Swiss here from Portland, Oregon. We have Jack Centred on your left, 2011 world champion David Cohen on your right. And these players are both playing for their tournament lives. The player eliminated here will unfortunately not advance to the top eight and the player who wins will advance to the top eight. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty unfortunate matchup for Jacob. Sorry, for David. Uh, Jack is playing Pyroar. David is playing Evil Tall Seismitoad. And we're having special guest Jacob Van Wagner join us in the booth. What's going on, everybody? So while these guys are taking the first few turns, tell us how you did in this tournament, Jacob. Um, I ended 6-0-2. I was 6 0 I put in the... After the last round, and then I deed with Chase Maloney because he was at 6 1, and the extra point puts him in. Absolutely. Always feels nice to ID your last round. Yeah, yeah. Especially in a grueling day like this, it's been. Yeah, definitely. It's been a headache, especially playing Seismitoad. Just saying qu Quaking Punch for like <laughs> nine hours. So, unfortunately, it looks like uh, Jack is getting off to a pretty good start here. Um, the matchup is. Pretty lopsided in his favor, I'd say. Uh, but yeah. I think the ways that David can win, obviously he can take prizes off of the Lit Leos. Mm -hmm. He also has lasers available to him. Um, and there's also always decking. Right. And I actually think that decking is... He's off to a good start probably, so far. Yeah, he, he can at least start um, knocking out some Lit Leos and item locking. Yeah. But I actually think decking is the way that... David will win here. Um, it. <coughs> I on. played against Pyroar um, round six, seven, no, six. And what ended up happening was just, I guess it's a little different. I don't know if David plays any sort of energy removal, but with that, it just becomes lasering, just trying to laser them out of the game. And if there's, I also don't know, if, uh, I, don't, I wish I'd known more about David's list going into this, but if he plays trump card, then that just gives him infinite lasers, essentially. He doesn't play trump card, He doesn't play trump card? No. Oh, okay. We ta I talked a little bit. Okay. With him. Then yeah, rounds. I guess his out is just going to be taking advantage of these lit leos while he can. While they're still lit leos and not pyroars. Definitely. It looks like he actually just cars himself to four, so... Oh, uh, okay. Not off to an amazing start. Yeah. Interesting that Jack is playing... Oh, all right. Um, oh, we have an there. evolve and pass, and a no card hand from Jack. So I think this is going to go pretty well for David. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's um, it's unfortunate just because uh, David now is having a tough time doing anything. He can try. He just hit the hit on laser, which is nice. Yeah. He can also lie Sander to take some prizes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but besides that gonna have a really hard time he has nothing in his deck that can actually get through the pyroar so it's just going to be a laser mm -hmm. fest trying yeah. to mill him out definitely um, and i don't know it's this match cannot end in a draw that'll be a really awkward situation for both of them uh-huh so we'll Was that have a switch? to see yeah yeah looks like uh david is trying to leave his worst pokemon active basically but right I'm not sure that's a great plan because I think you still might want to get the item lock going mm -hmm. just so he can't the jack can't hit a switch or something like that to get out of this because this is one of the ways the right that's that, it's his win condition lose. versus this deck other than taking prizes on the EXs that jack the EX that jack has benched mm -hmm. and uh looks like he flipped tails so that's going to be pretty good for david yep and it doesn't look like he has a card he can play oh and <laughs> uh, there it is actually he drew the perfect card <laughs> <clears throat> he's not. He's still not in a great position because a uh, a muscle band and another laser kills this Lilio. Oops. Well, there's the muscle band. Yep. Uh, it just. Oh, uh, that's too bad. And there's the yeah, bicycle. that's that's what I was worried about was him just hitting a bicycle. Yeah. So we see how different this game would have been if David had just left the seismitoad up there. Yeah. Uh, I mean the. Let's see. So it's been he would take he would take more damage, but it he just needs to be able to um, 
Well, we need the pyro to items. get knocked out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the pi he 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 wouldn't take any damage because the pyro didn't wake up. So the pyro would have went on the sixty and then ninety, <laughs> and now well, maybe he could have attacked then. We got an but it's very possible the pyro would be at one hundred and twenty right now. Yeah, David yeah. can pass. The pyro gets knocked out after the poison. Looks like he's just gonna take the thirty on there. Yeah, take the second prize, but. And David still has the the opportunity to do that kind of play mm -hmm. over again. There's a Lysander. Uh oh. And a laser. So Jack actually, I mean, <coughs> Jack hitting the switch and the bicycle is basically running perfectly. Right. And that li that Lysander and the laser does the 140 to uh, Seismitoad, and it already had the 40 on it. So. Yeah, that's the knockout. So tough, tough spot to be for David. Although Darkrai is. An okay play, it can at least hit the side and throw it on the bench. Mm -hmm. That'll only take him two more prizes. But if Jack just chooses not to mention anything else, he can get his he can get his pyroar yep. lasered out potentially. And Jake uh, or David, sorry, is playing an end, so he's now fully resetting the bad hand that Jack had. Jack had a bunch of cards in hand anyways, and he drew prizes, so mm -hmm. not like David could prevent David could prevent that. But an unfortunate turn of events. David actually ends up getting fewer cards than Jack, too, which is not... Oh, I guess I get the same amount, actually. I forgot that Jack did the Seismitoad knockout last turn. Mm -hmm. So, so far, looking at the tournament results, looks like you're in. So, yeah. Jacob Van Wagner is in. Chase Maloney is also in. Yes. Uh, let's look at the rest of the... Sam Chen is playing against Chen Jing. Um, unfortunately, Chen cannot draw this round. He has to play against Sam because Sam is at 5-0-2. So Sam's looking to win there. Um, we have David Cohen's match. Dylan Mitchell and Trevor Reed also at five and two so the winner of that match may get in um six and two is not a lock though 18 points is not um guaranteed so right we're gonna see some heartbreak on that side of the table i'm mm -hmm. sure jordan stoddard and matthew chin are playing at five one and one yep pretty a lot of a lot of top name players here playing it some good records. It's got to be. It's so heartbreaking to go X one one and then have to and then lose and then make. Yeah. You know maybe I guess I'm like top sixteen at that point. And it looks like David's in a pretty tough spot. He does have crushing hammers. He does so have crushing that, hammers. Yeah, he just played one and got a heads on it, but he's looking through uh, Jack's discard before okay. deciding. So he does have. He does have a way to slow this deck down a bit. Takes the double colorless. There's another crushing hammer, but it misses. Looks like that was a laser heads. Indeed. And Jacob again tag. <coughs> sorry, David again attacking with Evil Tall. Doesn't really have a choice. The Seismitoad only has one energy on it, and it can very easily be knocked out next turn. Jack wakes up his Pyroar. There's a laser, there's a switch. Uh, Jack has been pretty famous in the Washington area for playing Pyroar basically non-stop this entire season. Uh, I know he's played other decks because I actually um, played him in a league challenge when he was playing a Manectric deck. So he has swayed a bit, but I think for every major tournament he has played py uh, some Pyroar variant. So I guess if he makes top eight, you can put him on Pyroar for Expanded <laughs> as well. Yeah. The deck just gets better there. Right. Do you have any idea what you're going to play? Um, you know you're in. Not really, to be honest with you. It, there's there's a lot of easy outs that you can take, like putting Dark Patch and Eveltal and Garbodor. I'm 
I'm thinking about that because it just seems consistent. And um, I wouldn't mind the change from not having to say Quaking Punch 30,000 times a game. <laughs> um, I have a couple of more like fun kind of things that I am working on, but I'm not sure how well they'll pan out. I'll be figuring that out more later tonight. Yeah. It's hard to test for expanded. Yeah. When it's only the top eight format or the day two format. When you spend so much time needing to focus on standard. Yeah, definitely. It's hard to just want to put in the extra time. Definitely. It was also very, uh, <clears throat> very interesting. I think we were the only regionals that did this, but at the Vancouver regionals, top eight was played that day, that same day. Oh, really? And so, yeah. So, like, David, uh, who made the top eight, and Chase had to... You know, they had about a half hour to think of their expanded deck and build it. Oh, and that's that insane. <coughs> I I, oh, that's right. I totally forgot. Yeah, so it was. Uh, we're obviously going to get a whole night here, but it still doesn't yeah. really ease your fears, especially when, you know, a situation can come up where you're deciding between Vrizian and Pyroar, and then you end up playing Pyroar, and then your opponent plays Napoleon or something. You know what I mean? Because right. it's so focused right. on who your actual opponent's going to be. Exactly. It looks like David's taking a second to think. Now David is actually item locked, it appears. Mm -hmm. Just hits for 30 and passes the turn. There's a switch. Has Jack always played this version of Pyro with the lasers and the Verbanks? Uh, I don't think so. I actually... I don't think so. I think he's played different versions because this morning when I asked him if he was still playing Pyro, he was like, yeah, a new one though. So I think... I don't know exactly what he's played in the past, but oh, okay. I think he's been on some different lists. Gotcha. It seems to me that um, Seismitoad... It's one of the more powerful ones, though, because at least you have some kind of backup yeah, I agree. attacker. I agree. Um, one of the best cards in the format, really. I okay. know some people were playing just Pyroar Garbodor. When it f or sorry. <clears throat> where people were playing just straight Pyroar when it first came out. Yeah. Which I think is better in Expanded, just because you can go more all-in on that Pyroar. Mm -hmm. I, think I'd I think I'd still want to play Seismitoad in Expanded. Mm -hmm. Just getting level ball and like super odd and tropical beach is really strong. Yeah, that's totally fair. David doesn't really have much to do, I don't think. Yeah, it's really not looking good for him. He did just hit that laser, which was nice. Yeah. But, I mean, Jack can get another Pyro set up. It's going to be tough. I mean, this matchup is very, very bad for David. And right. The whole matchup is just... He hasn't seen any Veltal yet, either. Nope. Which is really too bad. He can... I just wish I knew what, it, what he was in hand. He's holding his hand back like that. Well, the whole I think the whole just matchup comes down to like David has to find a way to win you know most matches are about like oh you know how can each player do what they do and is the matchup good or not and it's just it's actually just terrible for David and he right. has to try and find a way to not lose which is easier said than done and there's the retreat gonna heal the poison off And David is under item lock once again. After this round concludes, we'll once the top eight is announced, we'll be back and we'll announce the top eight and post it on the Facebook page, so you guys can vote on what players you'd like to see on stream for tomorrow. So check it out that out at facebook.com/otvpokemon. Things 
are still not looking good for David. It's crazy how the quiet the room gets when most of the players have been eliminated. Mm -hmm. and just left. No more side events going on. Trevor Reed advances to 6-2, so he's on the bubble now. It's going to be, I think, more than 10 players, perhaps, at 6-2. Mm -hmm. I have to do the math, but yeah. that's what my original calculation told me. So it's going to be pretty tough to see who's in and who's not. But as we know that result thus far. Have you found that you've enjoyed tournaments more or less since IDs have been a thing? Or draws in general have been a thing? Uh, it definitely has <coughs> been nice to just be able to say, oh, our record allows us to not have to play. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna not. I'm just going to not play. Absolutely. Not that it means I don't like playing. I love playing this game. But it's like nine hours or however long of just playing Pokemon. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the, been the option for the break is really nice, the extra break, even if it's only like an hour. Definitely, definitely. And there's plenty of tournaments where you can go 6-0 and then draw your last two rounds and then, yeah. Yeah. you know, you've gotten an hour long break or even two hours maybe and then just get to go home immediately or go mm -hmm. get dinner, whatever it is, which is nice. Looks like Jack wasn't sure he wanted <coughs> Juniper there. I guess he had a seismic code and a double colorless in his hand. Yeah. How do you guys in Oregon handle the etiquette of like playing a card and taking it back? Because I know in Washington, a lot of it is just like, did you take your hand off of it? Hmm. Is the idea like if um, you played a junior bird, but we're kind of like, eh, you could do it. Well, I, people in Oregon aren't <coughs> awful, so we <laughs> generally will let people take, take things back. <laughs> right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, it is a kind of a touchy subject. There, in, there are definitely situations where you're like, man, I know that's going to like change the outcome of this game, but do I want to just feel bad later? Right, or, right, right. And just like have it on your conscience or whatever. Right, and also I, like make someone upset, make a friend upset even, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I am generally completely willing to let anybody, any friend, take anything back. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care. If I'm playing versus my friend, I don't want to cause that kind of tension. Right, right. It's, it's just not worth it. It's Pokemon. Like, it's not, it's not worth making people upset at you, making you right. potentially upset at yourself Disrupting if that's the kind of person that you are. Right, exactly. Absolutely. Um... <coughs> Not to say that not allowing people to take things back is wrong, per se. Mm -hmm. I just am in the mantra of not wanting to That's fair. cause that issue. I think everyone, like, it seems to me, because it's not a clear-cut judge issue, it seems right. to me that every area has their kind of separate... Yeah. And I've even seen some beliefs. judges say, like, someone asked if they could take it back, and then a judge was like, well, no, I'm sorry, you did this. I'm like, it's just interesting to yeah, see yeah. judges get involved in that sort of situation, too. Yeah, I think for a judge, it's probably based on how reversible the situation is. Right. Because I know that, like, there's, for official things, like, if you say the wrong attack name or whatever, I know, like, the actual ruling is your opponent can say yes or no. Yeah. And I imagine that's probably how it is with, if you, you know, played a Juniper and then, like, picked up immediately, you could probably yeah. call a judge and, like, yeah. I think they would rule the same thing. But I could see a world where they just, the judge just wants to rule on what actually happened and mm -hmm. make you play the Juniper. It's tough, though, because you enter a lot of, like you said, moral realms and, like, right. a lot of murky moral water realms there. Moral and, like, per just, <coughs> like, personal issues. Yeah, for sure. And then there's a question of, like, I heard another player talking about how they said the wrong attack name today. Uh -huh. And they're like, it's not a part of the skill of the game, which is, like, totally a fair, you yeah. know, if you just as, like, a, it is a part of the skill of the game, it's a fair view as well. Like, right. you can't, it's not really a clear-cut issue. And I think context and body language plays a large part in it, too. Yeah. Like a situation that I had seen a friend happened with a friend kind of recently was his opponent 
said Megalo Cannon, but like had cl had a G Booster attached and had clearly went to like discard the energy right. to use G Booster, but just had had a misstep and said Megalo Cannon, right. and then he didn't let the person take it back. Which again, like that's nothing wrong with that, but the t context clearly was that he was trying, he was going to use G Booster, right, right. and even if I'd never met the person, I. Like, it's, they're clearly trying to use G-Booster. Right. The only thing that I don't like about that situation is that it really encourages players to not give information. Like, it, it, if you're going to make someone stick to what they said, which is fine, uh -huh. um, like, under the rules, how it works, but it encourages players to just take the energy and tap it on your guy and then discard it for a G-Booster. You know right. what I mean? And it, may, it kind of encourages people to be unclear, even though that is pretty clear to a, to a player who knows what they're doing. Right. It encourages people to be like put the energy on them like g-booster and then they have to like yeah g-booster you know what i mean it encourages yeah. people to just not <clears throat> be clear about what they're doing which is unfortunate mm -hmm. it seems like the most of the oregon player base is a little bit more casual than washington though and right. washington has a reputation for kind of being rules lawyers and yeah of being stringent about that sort everyone of thing. in oregon likes fun and friendship right. so we generally <laughs> won't be rules <laughs> right. everyone in, everyone in washington would slit their best friend's throat for a city's trophy i know i sure would if <laughs> i lived in washington mm -hmm. it just does that to you yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's similar to um when i went down to the texas marathon a few years mm -hmm. ago i was playing in the cities the first one and i noticed that like after every round the, the like pairings would get smaller and smaller yeah and it was just because in texas the culture is everyone just drops immediately like if you're zero two, you just drop immediately and leave that's and weird in washington there's a lot of a there's a lot of people who just play it out just for fun or to get top 16 or even yeah. if they're zero and three they'll still play because they're there for the day right and also there's a stigma about ruining your friend's resistance so you want to keep yeah I, I i i feel that way too sometimes if i play against a friend and i lose then i don't want to drop generally Definitely. Because I would feel bad if they miscut by, like, a percentage point or whatever. Right, exactly. And so it was just really weird seeing, you know, in Washington, you are encouraged not to drop because, you know, if, if, if I play Tyler anymore or something and then I he beats me and then I drop, like, he's not going to not be my friend, but he's going to think that that's, like, a, it's a faux pas, right? Like, it's something you shouldn't do. And it was just really interesting in Texas as everyone does it and it's not even talked about. Just like That's once you're eliminated, you just leave immediately. I mean, I've never yeah. played in Texas, so I guess I, I just haven't ever experienced that. That's really yeah. interesting. And it could have just been the area we were in. I don't want to speak for all of Texas. Sure. No, right, the, right. Like it happened multiple times throughout the cities and it was mm -hmm. just really interesting to see that because that just would not happen where I'm from at all. Right. So Jack did not bench that... Lit Leo that he just ultra balled for. Do is da is David out of lasers? Um, I because if he's not, then that was just really bad on I Jack's part. Yeah, I honestly do not know. I have to assume that Jack knows what he's doing with the deck. Right. <coughs> so Jacob must be. Maybe we can. Or sorry, David must be. Maybe we can get a laser count during the next game. Yeah. Just to make sure, but I also assume if David were just dead here he'd probably concede although i guess not maybe you want don't want to reveal that sure you know you want to make your opponent think you have something in your deck possibly interesting looks like he's gonna go ahead and oh he just has the versus seeker so jack is taking game one over david pretty much as expected right um it's gonna be It'd be really hard for David to be able to come back, but he doesn't get to go first, so now he yes, gets to. Yes, he does get to go first, and that's going to be. He's going to put important. Jack down a turn, essentially. But still not a great matchup for him. So if David loses here, he finishes 5 2 and 1, probably in the top 16, maybe on the lower end of it. So definitely get some points here. I'm not sure what Jack's at, though. I know. I know he's done okay this season, but I don't think he's done amazing. Right. But I know that he is fairly close to the invite, so maybe we'll talk to him after the after the match and see mm -hmm. where he's at. <clears throat> how was uh, how was um, intentional draws accepted by the Oregon community? 
Was there a lot of backlash for it or? No, we don't really care about it. There's if it, no if it works out, sometimes people are just like, oh yeah, I just want to <laughs> see if I can go undefeated, and right, we don't right. care. Like that's fine. There's yeah, there's a lot of talk about people being sour about when they got announced, and people have just kind of people seem mm-hmm. to some people seem to hate it, and it it may have been like that at the beginning, mm-hmm. but as far as I remember, no one in my area has been like, oh, I really hate IDs; they're yeah. bad for the game. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't think anyone in Washington has really been like that either. Yeah. I think everyone just kind of accepts that it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's like tough we do it at like league challenges and stuff. Like it's not <laughs> right, right, right. It's <laughs> tough that four zero. We'll just like draw and get first and second, and then you're like, oh, yeah, okay, totally. Cool. You may as well save that hour of your time. Right. It's a. Uh, I know there's a lot of. Not generally IDs, but sort of the changes to the organized play system that they built in IDs, and then some of that can encourage concessions from players. I know that that's <coughs> been kind of a tough subject for some people, but uh-huh. I think in the Northwest community, it's been totally not an issue. I don't really like the the sort of like behind the scenes kind of thing that happens with IDs being a thing now like the oh do you want a coin flip to see who wins right, do you want right, to right. do like rock paper scissors <coughs> or just get or just agree on like prizes at the end of time if we're, right, we're going to tie right. not that there's anything wrong with it I just don't really like what it leads to people doing and just being scummy if they if something happens and then they're like oh well actually no I don't want to do that now right or, right I mean the for the rock paper scissors and coin flip is actually illegal too. I uh, know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but people still do it. Definitely. And it also <laughs> leads to awkward situations where like in this match for instance, if it goes to a draw, I assume David would just scoop to Jack because I think David knows the matchup's terrible. Right. But well if this goes to time then Jack will win <laughs> anyway, because he won game one. Uh, I, I guess I mean if the game ended in a draw like if it if oh. David wins a game and then it right. ends in a draw. Like it, it, this sort of match, um, where both players can finish 5-1-2 and both finish in the top 16 or one of them can finish you know maybe 18th and the other uh-huh. in the top 8 and it just kind of leads to you know I've seen it myself uh, last year at Oregon Regionals the, the one you won uh, Chad Bosquez and Trevor Reed had a situation where they were both on the cusp of the top 8 and then they drew and it you know they just kind of sat there looked at each other for a second and kind of like they drew cards to determine like who would have won in a few turns because like you, you know no one wants to say like all right i'm gonna get one person's gonna get you know four packs and one person is or sorry no one wants to say one you know we're both gonna get half a box or whatever when one person could win the tournament so right it leads to a lot of weird communication issues mm-hmm. and especially now that asking for concessions is not allowed right because before you used to be able obviously some yeah. people have their things about asking for concessions but you used to be able to say like hey listen you know i can i can make the cut and you can't would you mind conceding and now it's actually illegal so it even which is i think is fine i think it's probably good for people that don't like that sort of thing but it also just makes it hard, that harder to communicate in that situation yeah yeah <clears throat> Because there are some people who are, that's just really important to trying to be able to ask for a concession with like a friend or something. Right. And right. it's uh, it's awkward, as you said. It's just awkward yeah, trying definitely. to maneuver around <coughs> that situation. So it's a lot of litlios on Jack's side. Unfortunate that. David flipped tails on that sleep check. Well, David did bench another evil tall EX. Finally so. saw one. Yeah, at least he can. <laughs> not Can't say lose he never got to draw any Veltal. True. Very true. Oh, and he missed the energy too. Goodness. Wow. It's just looking That's, grim. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's the pyro. If there were ever a time to have a bad game. Honestly, I was actually thinking about this in <clears throat> the car ride on the way down here. Uh-huh. I don't think that people who don't play competitive games or maybe even sports as well get how it feels to get ninth at a tournament or 33rd or whatever the right. cutoff is. Like, I've heard multiple times while watching events, like, oh man, Jacob got ninth. That sucks so bad. And then some, somebody who doesn't play is like, wait, why? That's awesome. Ninth out of 300. And it's like, yeah, but <laughs> it's not what you're aiming you for. You don't understand you know? what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird to explain that, like, in a way, you'd rather get 
20th than 9th. You know what I mean? You would rather yeah. be totally out of it than then just be so like one close. Off and yeah. then just be bitter. That is a lot of energy. And that's the other pipe. Oh, we yeah, we see. Uh, do you know what that ability is called? I don't know what it's called, but you discard energy from the Pyroar, and you get to switch up your opponent's active, similar to Red Signal. Right. Flare, Flare command. command. So that's actually a way for him to finish the game faster, I guess. You know, be able to, if you have a turn off, you can Flare Command up right. their EX or whatever it is. And, and, and Blacksmith essentially becomes two <coughs> catcher effects. Definitely. Which is pretty strong. That's insane to say, <laughs> <It's pretty> yeah. strong. <laughs> <coughs> I remember when we were streaming the Vancouver Regionals this mm -hmm. year, it was, I was talking to a bunch of the players, and the list, the list become really interesting when it's only top eight. Like, I remember all the Pyro were running for Muscle Band because you couldn't beat them here without it. And it just it's interesting how that only having the top eight and only having that few hours to decide, not even a few hours, that few minutes to decide, really affects people's perception of the metagame. And like right. if you like if you posted those lists that won, it would they would a lot of them would be kind of strange and like wouldn't be good to take to an expanded tournament necessarily. Right. Like they wouldn't they wouldn't be good in day two of Swiss. Right, because it's just so much more of an open field. Mm -hmm. It's kind of unfortunate. I wish we lived in an area where we could have a day two Swiss for something because I remember seeing all of the posts about people playing Empoleon or Lucia or uh -huh. Evil Tall or just other decks. And here it's basically, because it's only top eight, it's basically only been Verzian, Pyroar, and some Empoleon. Right. Remember when people thought Electric would make a splash and expand it? <laughs> And then they remembered that Seismithode is a card. <laughs> and uh, Garbodor. And Garbodor is a card. <coughs> and you can even put those two in the same deck if you wanted to. <sighs> yeah. That's tough. How do you feel about Expanded overall? Do you think it's a cool change to the game or worse? Or I like it. I like the idea. <coughs> um, it makes for more more deck ideas we haven't really seen a lot of different deck ideas we've seen like old plasma fairies and right. evil Tall garb and pyroar right and um just the Evil Tall variants that are strong because of having level ball and whatever but i wish i had more time to explore it and um try and find a deck that's just really fun to play and also good definitely it's just hard because I don't think the format's quite old enough yet. Like most of the decks, <coughs> excuse me. Most of the decks just look like old standard decks or exactly standard decks with maybe four changes. You know, yeah. I think if the format had been Heart Gold on or something, it would look that would be insane. pretty different. Or and I think even in a few years, as long as the power level of cards does not continually increase, yeah. I think in you know five years, expanded will be more interesting and different because it won't just be our actual standard decks. But it'll be interesting. It's actually possible that if it were Heart Gold on, it would be the same as well because the cards are just so much more powerful now. Like you can't right. really play Jump Pluff in a field. Four Junk like Arm. Yeah, exactly. Just there's there's so many crazy turn one combinations with Junk Arms and bicycles and everything. Yeah, definitely. It's possible that it's just actually worse. Right. And now Jack just has both Pyroars up and... Up and ready to go. I don't like him having to use that Jirachi there, but I guess if he... I mean, I don't even think you really need to use the Jirachi there. No. But I guess you can... You know, it's only two prizes. Uh, David still has five left. Even if even if he knocked another Pyroar, he'd go into three. So I guess... Or if you don't have the Jirachi, he'd go into three. So I guess it's fine. I mean, if... David doesn't have lasers here. Uh, if he didn't play lasers in his deck, Jack can just step the Pyroar and automatically win. Like I don't, right. you know, b besides decking, David right. wouldn't have a chance. And then, and once he's out of lasers, it's a similar situation where it's just <clears throat> uh, J David is just locked out. 
Uh, did Jack take his prizes? Yeah, he had six prizes and took and took a knockout on the Evolta. Okay. So what are where are you at with your points now that you've made the top eight? Um, <coughs> I have I probably had less than a hundred honestly going in going into this tournament. Um, I didn't play a lot of cities, and the ones that I did play I didn't do very well. Mm hmm. Just because so of your yeah. work commitments and such. Work and not having a lot of time to really test. Mm -hmm. and like test seriously and um that's fair it I didn't be. do very well at Vancouver regionals <coughs> you're going to continue to play the rest of the season out though go to states and regionals and all that uh, or? maybe like I can just take work days off with this work situation that I'm in mm -hmm. I can just ask to not have to work those days and they just won't, they just won't call me okay but um, I'm not sure if I really want to do that because then, you know, it's... You'll have like, less money. Have less money. Yeah. And need money to <laughs> yeah. survive and be a human being. Right, right. <laughs> That's weird. So, I guess the answer is we'll see. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm contemplating going to Florida regionals, though, depending on how, I well, how well I do here. Or making a trip to, like, a spring regionals. That'd be fair. I mean, you can probably. I mean, if you win this event, you'll be sitting somewhere 200 points ish. You know what I mean? Pretty yeah. close to the. Yeah. I'll probably have broke. I think I'm at <coughs> 90 something right okay. now. So. So you'll be dangerously so close to that. So I'll be at like point. I'll be at like 150, 150 something after this event. If you lose in the top eight. If I lose in the top eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But come on, we know that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Is that just a regular intimidating main pyro that's active, or is that? Uh, the yes. Then the other one. The art is so similar to the flare command pyro. I'm never sure with the right. glare from the lighting. I know, right? I th um, the other one has been knocked out, I believe. Oh. Okay. And I, I can only imagine yeah. Jack only runs one copy. Right. I know a local, a Portland area player, um, Dylan Mitchell has been playing Pyro for a long time. He hits the same sort of thing with Jack. He's known to always be playing Pyro. I think he brought a different deck with him today. But he did play to Flare Command Pyro and, Trum and Trump Card. Ooh. Just because it helped a lot with the Dawn Fan matchup. Being able to just constantly bring things out and never have to worry about prizing that Pyro. Well, Dylan Mitchell finished okay. He finished 5-3. He lost to Trevor. Oh, okay. So, probably somewhere in the top 32. Yeah. And David takes a prize off of the knockout in the Pyroar via the laser. He's almost there. <laughs> Only four <laughs> more times. Yep. Realistically, only one or two of those will actually be difficult but right but especially might since be too many jack is now under item lock i believe uh yep oh actually yeah that's a double because because i assume he didn't just pass and let him die yeah, poison yes, that way absolutely well it's david so it's, it is david <laughs> that's true but no, yeah, absolutely absolutely imagine the comeback story there is a tournament i'm sure you've heard this story but i don't think the world has where i was it was a city championship when durant was legal because i was playing durant uh -huh. and i was playing against a local player who is known for always doing okay like he'll make the top eight of some cities but he'll always be like top 16 you know what i mean he never does poorly right he's made top eight and top fours of like states and stuff before but never really gone the distance and uh we we're playing in the top eight and he was playing typhlosion and i was playing durant and I won game one, he won game two, and then game three, a situation came up where 
he had knocked out all of my Durance, I think, or I didn't have access to them in some way. And I had to use Mime Jr., who, what, he has an attack, it's a free attack, um, just puts one of your opponent, puts the top card of your opponent's deck into the Lost Zone. And then he has the baby uh, Pokebody back then, where if... If what? Uh, sorry, I was reading the chat. Um, <clears throat> and then he had the baby claws where um, it put it to sleep and he couldn't be damaged while he was asleep. And basically, my opponent had a fully ready-to-go Typhlosion. I had Mime Jr. and I had to hit nine perfect Mime Jr. flips to <laughs> mill him out. And I, it's just like, it's it's similar to... Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I did it. And it's it's very similar, I think, to situations like... Like, if David were to win this match, or um, maybe, like, the Seahawks lost the Super Bowl, where you just have... There's just so you mean, like, what did happen? <laughs> yes, like, you just have no way... You just have, like, no way of believing that you're actually going to lose the game. You know, my opponent's thinking, like, all I need to do is just attack with this Typhlosion one time, and I win. He has to mess up one in nine flips, and I didn't. Obviously, it's no test of skill. It's purely, it's purely coin flips, but, well, <laughs> you know... Mime Juniorring is a skill, but and my opponent, yeah, he didn't get mad obviously because he's a pretty calm guy, but he was just like stunned. Clearly, like you just don't expect that ever to happen. I don't know what the numbers are on that, but it's just like something that's so astronomically right, <clears throat> especially when you just have the uh, like you just have the game in hand. Right, it's it, it can be kind of frustrating. Oh, definitely. We saw crushing hammerheads from David, but I don't know how useful that's going to be at this point. Especially since he just got rid of one fire, and there's still a fire and a double colorless on that fire. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. I was actually trying to explain the idea of kind of getting up to the game or tilting to my girlfriend the other day, mm -hmm. and I was saying how um, I used to go on tilt really badly. I've since the past. The last year I was playing competitively, I tried to kind of calm that down. And I yeah. didn't really... I was never a, like, person to, like, yell or anything like that. I would just get very, like, sad. Right. I just kind of go s sulk off on myself. But <laughs> one of the things that I think you have to consider is that well, it's good. just... You expect... Yeah, you expect things to go a certain way, and you say, okay, so the only way my opponent can win is if he draws, you know, laser, and then laser, and then gets ahead, and then he draws a juniper, and then those seven cards are exactly this, you know what I mean? And, like, right. you just, like, the chance of that happening are it's so RNG low, and then it actually away. happens, like, and you just have to, like, you say any other result, and that doesn't, and I've had multiple matches like that, I'm sure we all have, you know, right. where your opponent has 20 cards left in their deck, and they need to draw a bicycle, and then they need to draw laser, verbank, uh, muscle band, energy to win and then they do it's like one of those things where obviously you can't really get mad about just how the game works but it is going to be frustrating <clears throat> shout out to everyone in the chat right now appreciate you hanging out with us if you're watching on youtube you don't understand what that is but this is for the this is for the day ones Hanging out in the chat. I love that sort of interaction with the stream. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an attack. Looks like Jack is just worried about not drawing another energy. I don't. I couldn't see what it was in his hand. I'm not sure if he had one, but he has a bunch of cards and. Can take a knockout there, go to yep. three prizes. Yep. I don't know why he isn't just trying to quaking punch here. David? Yeah. And like he has a juniper in his hand too. I guess I guess he's out of lasers again. That must that's the only reason I can think of why he's not playing the supporters. Yeah, if he's just on the actual decking plan. Right. But I don't think that's gonna work out too well for him. Right. Because I think Jack plays a Lysander's jump card. I feel like I saw one. Uh, I can only imagine. Also, he can just, act, like, Jack gets to actually attack and do right. damage. You right. know what I mean? Right. So I feel like, even regardless, it would be. Now, if there was a card like Durant, then maybe hmm. David could get there. Interesting. Then again, Seismitoad is a card. 
Yeah, and Jack so we does come play back to this. It's really interesting to me to think about. Uh, there was a tournament when Durant was legal where Ross Cawthon was playing Gothitelle, and he played against Durant, and then I asked him how his match went. He just kind of looked up at me and said, did you know that Gothitelle takes six energy to knock out a Durant, or eight energy, or some crazy amount? Wow. And it's just really interesting because, like... Oh, with special medals and... Special medals and Eviolite and right. resistance. And it's really interesting to me to think that, like, Durant had 70 HP, you attach one special medal to it, and the Eviolite basically there's 110 HP yeah. and that used to be like oh man how am I gonna 110 only like the biggest attacks do that you know what I mean how am I gonna really get through this I can do it with a Zekrom but not if he has multiple special medals you know what I mean yeah. and yeah. now 110 an evil tall can do that in turn 2 you know what I mean it's just right. the even the power creep in these few short years is just so high yeah I just don't see this working out for David now <coughs> Unfortunately. Well, he just has to. He I mean, should just be quaking punching until he can't. Until he physically can't do it anymore. Uh. Is it possible? You said like he had even supporters if it was just, in his Even hand. if it was just a couple of turns, like I think he is just on the deck out strategy. But I don't. I feel it's it's just not going to work. Well, if he's not able to retreat Mewtwo here... Oh, he can. He has the Dark in hand. Mm -hmm. There's also a Keldeo with a Dark Energy on it. Oh, okay. You can see the Dark so there. So he can just use Rush he can just retreat re from that. Retreat as much as he wants. Jack counting out the cards in his deck. He's at five. Alright. Oops. Almost had a bit of a situation there. Is Jack out of ends? Is that what's going on? I don't... Right. I don't. I just don't see this working out. I mean, so David. Okay, so let's assume that Jack is going to mail himself. Let's assume he doesn't have trump card or ends or anything. Right. Or more. He has four cards in hand, and so he attacks the Seismitoad. He attacks. He he gets to attack Seismitoad twice. Yeah. Yeah. Without knocking it out. He'll do eighty. Oh, he has a muscle band. He has a muscle band, so he'll do eighty, and the next turn he'll do one thirty. So he can or attack. Or one ten. One ten. Okay, so he goes, he has four He has four cards left after the draw, yeah. attacks the Toad. Yep. David retreats into... Probably the other Seismitoad. The th yeah, other Seismitoad. He Jack goes into three cards, attacks. Ooh, the scramble switch plays. He switches to Keldeo, Jack is at two cards. And then... Do we see a laser here? Is that what's going on? Oh. No, Crushing Hammer. Crushing Hammer. Yeah. Okay, that actually is relevant, I suppose. Yeah, so, okay, so he, so, at the time that he hits the Keldeo, he will have two cards left in his deck. So, then yeah. Jacob, or David hopes that he misses energy for two more turns. Hmm. Because David cannot afford to give off another prize. Someone says in the chat, this game is why you play Garbodor and Evel Tall. Not wrong. So now David has to retreat into the. Yeah. Either the Keldeo or the. Or the other size Matoad. Right. And Jack having that uh, blacksmith there actually makes it so that he can for sure use uh, be able to discard an energy yeah. with Pyroar so David can't go into, for instance, his evil tall that has 80 mm -hmm. or anything of that sort. David dropping a card. So yeah, I think unless... David has something I don't expect, or he has more hammers. I think that Jack should just win here. Right. Because three cards left in deck. Rush into the Keldeo. 
attack it. Two cards left in deck. Retreat to the other side with one card left in deck. Yeah, and there's the Lysander. Okay. okay, so. Jack is going Not to. Not so surprisingly took the series Yeah, I mean, series 2-0 pretty easily. Right. Uh, we'll be advancing to the top eight. Uh, 19 points should be a 